Okay, guys, we had a little business we have to take care of. That's taken care of. And uh, if you go to Matthew chapter 4, and as usual, I am uh, going to do a 24-hour, or sorry, 24-minute review and then have two news points. No, just kidding. Okay. We'll, we shall see. But as we look at the path of Jesus, as we look at the story of Jesus, guys, I'm going to put in one of these lozenges. My voice is doing some weird stuff this morning. But uh, the good news is, if I need to get low for a point, I will be able to do so. Okay. So, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds. He climbed a hillside, the King James, I believe, says a mountain, and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, the first point is, here's the deal. Sometimes it takes effort to follow Jesus. Okay, his salvation is free. The Bible literally says it's so simple that a child need not err from the truth. And that, that word child does not mean infant. It means like a young child. It's not that complicated. He paid the price that you couldn't pay. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Does that make sense? Okay, let me tilt that a little bit. They're cutting the top of my head off, and I, I like to see the PhD, the Pentecostal hairdo. Okay, so, but he says these words. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit. And I love what the message says. It says you're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With a lot less of you, with less of you, there's more of God and his rule. In other words, can't nobody fight like a desperate person. I like thinking about the third monkey that was trying to get on the ark. Okay. He had, he was vested, he was vested in the, bo- in, in the, uh, in the battle. Does that make sense? And here's the deal. I don't, okay. And I, I want to say this, be careful how I say this. There's a lot of scriptures that I like better than others, okay? This is not my favorite because I don't want to be at the end of my rope. I've got an image to uphold, okay? i got people who depend on me, but guess what? You know, and I, I said this years and years ago, people were saying, ah, you know, I can't pray, I can't do this, and I told them, I said, yes, you can. It just ain't got bad enough. You can pray. It may be right before you run off the road at high speed. You will say, Lord Jesus, right? I mean, you can pray. And that's what this scripture is saying. It's like, here's the deal. When you get there, then you, your priorities get lined up. When you uh, are underwater, and if you got hung down there and couldn't get up, your priority would not be who's going to make my house payment. Your priority would not be who voted for who. Your priority would be, I got to have some air, wouldn't it? Does that make sense? Okay. Well, we are blessed when our priorities get lined up by circumstances. And here's the deal. Number two, we went over last week. You're blessed when you've lost what's most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one who is most dear to you. Guys, I had this religion thing all I had figured out. It was like math. You do this, this happens, this happens, this happens. And guess what God did? You're not going to believe this. He came and messed up the whole chessboard. He turned it upside down. He used circumstances. He used the word of God. He used men and women in my life and teachers and and people who cared about me. And as I began to look at that, I'm like, if I was the best planner in the world times 27, I could not have lined up all those circumstances. I'm serious. And you know, God is God. Did you know that? 
And all things are working. Either, either his word is true or it's not true. Okay? You need to make up your mind. Either it's true or it's not true. But some of you, all you look at the word of God is, uh, you're not Christians, you're Paulit, Paulinians. Okay? You find a scripture in there that you like that Paul said, and the rest of it just goes out the window. That don't work, folks. I'm sorry. And I love Paul. Kim's studying Paul now, and we're actually in Ephesians in Sunday school. I love Paul. Okay? But he's not my savior. Jesus is my savior. And if, he, if Paul could have saved us, he would have. He's a good guy. Okay? So here's the deal. In that situation when you've lost what's most dear to you, let's say it's your peace, let's say it's your finances, let's say I can't tell you how many people have been reborn in the time of the ultimate struggle in so many things. And, and hey, if we're voting, I'd rather uh, get it by osmosis or something easy. And, you know, I joined the easy military. You know, I, 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 I'm just telling you, get it, get it the easy way. But here's the deal, that usually doesn't work like that. It could be death of a dream. It could be death of a person. It could be death of, of something that you thought was always going to happen. It could be, you know, whatever it is. Things didn't work out like what you thought they were. But guess what? There's a book full of people that things didn't work out the way they thought it would. And God used it. Think about it. Everybody in there. So what's this. And I, this next one irritates me. But there's pearls coming from this irritation. That's where pearls come from. Okay. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what's more dear to you, but when you go to the next one, you're blessed when you're content with just who you are, no more or no less. It says, blessed are the meek. And see, when I read that in the King James, even the NIV, when I say that word meek, I'm like... So were we all supposed to wear white robes, walk around, talk like this? Well, if there wasn't no rest of the Bible, see that messes that theory up. There's the whole rest of the Bible. I stood right there underneath where the bell used to be and a, a guy was visiting and he said, um, oh yeah, you're the pastor here. I said, yeah. He's, I, I said, well, yeah, you know, I said, I'm bi bi vocational, you know, I'm a police chief, and this is years ago. And he, uh, he said, you're a policeman? I go, yeah. He goes, you can't be a policeman and be a pastor. I said, well, you know, does that mean that David couldn't take something that looked essentially like a hatchet and wander through and kill people in the name of the Lord? I mean, think about it. And he's like, uh, and I said, you know, it's a big book. <laughs> God used all kinds of men in all kinds of different positions in all kinds of different ways. And uh, I said, these people are so mean, they need a policeman. The, the church, the church in uh, uh, Lampy, there were two policemen. There was a pastor and an associate pastor. That's how, they, how rough they were at the south end of the county. You, you guys just need one. Okay, so... Watch this. So here's the deal. This meekness is power under control. Okay. So when you look at here, it also talks about being content with who you are. Now, who are you? I'm going to tell you something. The more I try to be somebody else, the more I try to be something else, the more confusing it gets. Okay. But who I am, where my identity lies is in a S-O-G. You go, what? An S-O-G. Son of God. And you girls can be daughters of God. Jesus is called the firstborn of many. And listen, I ain't Jesus. Okay, I proved it again yesterday. Okay, no, I'm serious. I ain't Jesus. I'm trying. Okay, and he's with me. And the Holy Spirit leads me. But I ain't Jesus. And you ain't either. So don't be so proud. Don't be looking down on me, okay? But here's the deal. That power under control, that contentment 
It comes from knowing that all things are working together for good of them that are called according to his purpose, that he loves me in spite of me, that he, I'm fully accepted this morning in his presence because he says, come boldly into the throne. And here's the deal. You say, well, you don't understand. And listen, I repent a lot. I'm serious. I repented before I came in. And you say, it's not because I... I'm afraid I'm going to slip on a banana peel and hit my head and go to hell. I do it because I want nothing between me. I don't want nothing in the water hose when I plug up to him this morning and spray out to y'all. I don't want none of that other stuff in there. Does that make sense? Okay. So what's this? Be content with who you are. Walk in meekness, knowing that he has all things tied together. So then we go to... You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink for the best that you've ever had. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. So we're desperate and we're hungry. I'm going to tell you, both of them make me grouchy. No, I'm dead serious. Both of them things make me grouchy. Okay? It's court, you know, I, I do that uh, uh, fast for so many hours, and then eat at a time, blah, blah, blah. And toward the end of that, whatever that is, on that particular day, ever how that works out, I'm hungry. And I might be a little touchy, right? But he says, blessed when you hunger and thirst after righteousness. Guys, when I'm hungry, I'm not, I'm not talking about just, oh, look at that, that smells good, I want some of it. No, when I'm hungry, that becomes a priority. And I'm gonna tell you something, this morning, God is a priority in my life. The reason he is is because I'm hungry. I'm tired of seeing the brokenness, the shame, the all. I'm, I'm hungry for him so that we can bless him and then pass it out to the multitude. Does that make sense? Because he is the bread of heaven. He is, not you doing it just like you're supposed to or you doing it on Saturday or Sunday or, you know, get baptized and running water, you know, and start, you know, listen, he is the person. And then, what's this? You're blessed when you care. At the moment you of being careful, you find yourself cared for. And that's, of course, the message. But go over here when you're used to. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Now, guys, I got to tell you, in about six months, when we go two, two chapters over and get to Matthew 7, because I evidently don't drive very fast when I'm in the pulpit. But watch this. Just watch. All right. When I was in the Air Force, basic training, they said, you got to fold your underwear six inches wide and put it in that little box. I said, I ain't got no ruler. I, 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 six inches. You know. Everybody had a $1 bill. You lay it down there, six inches, or dollar bill is exactly six inches. That was the standard. And I want you to hear this this morning because this scares me for myself. Because this, if I need something to bring me back to the ground, this scripture will do it. Whatever standard, if I expect you to be whatever, whatever standard that I hold to you, God holds to me. Matthew 7, verse 2. And he says, blessed are the merciful. And you, you ain't going to, you're not going to believe how merciful I can be because I need it. No, 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 I'm dead serious. You have no idea because I need it. You think I'm going to judge you and then sit around and wait for God to judge me? No, thanks. I mean, here's the deal. And I, I'm not popular in some circles because I say, you know, hey, if you're breathing, come in that door and let's go to church. If you're whatever, I don't, you ain't got everything worked out. I, it's good. Neither do I. Okay. Maybe different somethings. Okay. But the reality is, come to church. Receive Christ. Understand that he died on the cross for you. Because 
here's the deal. I need that standard. And if you don't need that standard, you judge them any way you want to. Because I'm going to tell you, God is the judge. I'm not. And that word judge there does not mean whether you should lend them money or not. What that means is damn that person. I don't damn people. Okay? I don't make the guilty or innocent verdict of anyone in this world. What I do is I may judge their fruit and say, I don't want to lend them money. I don't want to invest in that situation. They've gone bankrupt three times. I don't want them to be my babysitter because they've lost two kids. You know, I, I mean, you see what I'm saying? It doesn't mean you can't make it decisions based on past performance, but what it does mean is I can't damn them, okay? And so I don't want to be damned, so I don't damn people. And you say, well, you know, the Bible says this, the Bible says this. Well, it's a big book. You better start because we're fixing to get into the next few weeks about, listen, in the same category he puts murder, he puts hate. Jesus does that, not Paul. Jesus says it's in the same category. You hate your brother, you murder your brother. Does that make sense? So, you, no, not really, but it's what the Bible says. Okay. So, watch this. Now we're, we've got some new stuff here. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And I want to tell you something. We're talking about a purity that is way past the outside. Okay? Because... I can tell you that I've done search warrants on people's houses for horrible crimes with praise and worship going in the background, them having Bibles stacked up all over the place, them being a member of this organization or that organization, and then them going to prison for life without parole, okay? I mean, you, you say, you could get that outside cleaned up, okay? You could fool people if you got enough money. You can, you can, you know what I'm saying? You can put on an image, okay? But what's on the inside and what purifies us from the inside is not our actions. It's the receiving of him. And then I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I've got pretty good night vision still. I really do. But I have one room in my house that needs a little light work. And when I'm looking for something, I bring a light with me in there because it might be small, it might be, you know, and there's only one window and I got it blocked off, you know, because I don't want nobody to shoot me while I sleep. But anyway, the, the, not that that would ever happen. Or not that I ever thought about that. Okay. But here's the deal, guys. I'm not kidding. Okay. I bring light in there. So, it, and I want to tell you something. As the closer I get to Jesus, the more light there is in my life. And the, the more I start pushing stuff out, I start, ooh, I had never really dealt with that. Let's get rid of that, you know? And some people are saying, yeah, well, that person's not doing that. And that church is not doing that. And this church is not doing that. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You better turn the light on in your house. You better be cleaning up your own house. Because I'm going to tell you, whatever standard you're doing, you're going to pay the price for whatever finger you're pointing. And I'm telling you, that is the scripture. That is, and somebody says, oh, what comes around, what goes around comes around, you know, that's not scripture, but that's something, okay, and then there's this whole teaching on karma and, and all that stuff, but here's the deal, the reflection of that is, is God looks at the heart, okay, and where's your heart at this morning, and he will shine the light in your heart and make us pure, and here's the deal, in his presence, we're already okay, but in the day-to-day -day house cleaning, what will happen is, is you'll start, you may have to buy a dumpster to get rid of some of that stuff. Or, or okay, rent one, don't buy one, they're too expensive. Okay, so that's the pure in heart. And then five and nine, you're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. Blessed are the peacemakers. Well, This is kind of a joke, okay? I apologize that I think everything's funny. But here's the deal. The funny thing about the Old West was the name of the pistol was the peacemaker. Think about that, the cult peacemaker. And so actually power brings peace. See, the reason that I treat you nice 
even when I don't feel like it, is because I want to be treated nice. Because I understand the power of the Holy Spirit. I understand the power. I have seen people come against people of God in strong ways and things happen to them. And you're like, what the, what did, who did, what? What was, what? And, and here's the deal. You say, well, you know, I see the wicked prosperous. David said the same thing, but I'm going to tell you, you don't know what's going on inside. Does that make sense? The torture that's going on inside. And here's the deal. God has called us to be peacemakers and not poop stirrers. Okay. It does not say blessed are the poop stirrers. Can anybody see that in there? Okay. I'm saying that the very best I can. I'm trying, I'm trying to be good, Kathleen. I know you're watching. Okay. That's my mama. She's been gone a long time. As my friends down south say, she's dead right now. But, okay. So, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I love what he says with this. Essentially, he says, you know what? And he says this several different ways, several different times. They've always come against people who tell the truth. Isn't that weird? He said, the prophets, they, the, you've stoned my prophets. You've, you've, you've done all that. And then, of course, he, they kill him for telling the truth. But the reality is, is that when people persecute you and I go, I literally go into my prayer closet and go, I can't, but I'm, do, I'm doing everything I can do here, Lord. Can you not help out a little bit? I mean, I've literally had the audacity to pray that prayer. I've literally stood out on the back porch of my house one time, never will forget it, and said, I wouldn't even treat my kids the way I'm being treated. And you know what? What, what audacity to pray that to the king of the universe that knows everything that's going on, past, present, and future, and is working out all things, you know. But here's the deal. I'm just like you, except you're probably better, okay? But here's the deal. When we show people how to cooperate, when we love the unlovable, guess what happens? When we love the unlovable, guess what happens? When we love the unlovable, guess what happens? People go, wow. 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 Wow, is that real? Is that because we can fake it? You know, we can fake it. I could, I have, uh, never mind, I won't tell that story. Okay, I'll keep going. Okay. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The, per the persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. And when, you know how you read the book and it says, see line. Three, so go back to there and you're blessed when you're at the end of the rope. So you get persecuted down there. It's at both ends of it. Because in this life, this life is not for sissies. Okay? Does that make sense? Living for him is not for sissies. And you can be glad when this happens, when they discredit. You can be glad for the, it happens, give a cheer even for though they, they don't like it. I do, and all heaven applauds when you're being when this is happening. When you're disowned, you or put you down, or speak lies, or persecuted. And here's the deal: I do not want to be persecuted. I want to be adored. Okay, I want to be adored. I do. There's not a doubt in my mind. I mean, most people are not are too smart to say it, you know. But I'm just not that smart. I'm not that complicated, you know, and here's the deal. I have made steps to be adored way before I was an adult, okay, and I like that. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. Higher handlebars and louder pipes. Whoo! But watch this. I, even though that's my flesh, I am willing not to be. And the, will, the reason I'm willing not to be is because I pray every day, every service here, Lord, let your kingdom come and your will be done and adore him, okay? And I tell you, if you adore him, in this life there will be 
Oh yeah. There you go. May not be they might not be having an adoration party for you. Okay? So here's the deal. Last point. And uh verse thirteen, there is an entire there's a book in this, and I'm not gonna try to read it to you today. Okay. You of those of you who are watching online and those of you who are here with me this morning, I'm speaking this to you this morning because it's the truth. Because the Bible says it, and it it's just the truth. You are the salt of, for the earth, of the earth. You are. Okay. Now listen, I can't do anything without Jesus. I can, and we all know that. Okay, we're all a mess. Merry Christmas. But here's the deal. No joke. He has put us here as salt. And when you look at salt, and again, there's a book here, there's an article, there's a 24-hour you know, study program. But what's this? I like salt. Okay? In fact, I may like it a little too much. Okay? I like salt. But guess what salt is? First thing is I was praying over this again. For the, I've spoke, I've talked about this a bunch of times, okay? And I've never said this word before. And I don't know why I gotta say it this morning. Salt's abrasive. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Evidently, Kim, someone, somebody gave her this probably. There's a salt scrub in our bathroom. It's abrasive. I've never used it. I don't know what it is. I'm scared of it. So I've not dared took the lid off of it. I, I mean, I'm not like scared to have to walk around it, but you know, I just don't know what it is. So things I don't know, I usually either touch and tear up or leave them alone. So I'm going to go with B in that situation. It's abrasive. But at the end of the abrasion, are you listening? At the end of the abrasion, things are smoother. Smoother. Guess what? I'm not telling you to be abrasive because you come out naturally, most of y'all. Okay. Or you wouldn't be here this morning. But watch this. Don't be surprised when you're in a relationship and it could get abrasive. Did you know I love the Hebrew in Genesis when it says, because my mama told it like this. I've quoted her twice this morning. I apologize, mom. But, you know, Adam was in, in the garden and he was so lonely. And, you know, they gave, God made him a helpmate. And that's true about this much, but there's a bigger story. What the Hebrew says is, it's not good that man be alone. Yeah. Now think about that. So, it's not good that we sit around and eat chips and watch TV, okay? It's not good that, you see what I mean? It's not good. So here's the deal. Relationships are abrasive. Church relationships can be abrasive. Uh, personal relationships can be abrasive. Family relationships can be abrasive. Country, and here's the deal. Instead of us just make it, the salt's the problem. No, the problem is the stuff that's sticking off up on us that needs to be rubbed off. Does that make sense? Because God's got a, he's calling a bride that's going to be smooth. Going back to the 70s, I could sing a couple of songs. Smooth. Okay, whatever. But you get it? Salt's abrasive. And I don't mean, don't, go, don't be more abrasive than you are, but if you're naturally a little bit to uh, your brothers and sisters, I think I fit that category sometimes, but I try not to be because, you know, I want to be adored. Okay. Second thing that salt does is it preserves. For many hundreds of years, salt was used instead of refrigeration. You smoke it, and I don't mean put it in a pipe and make, it feel, make you feel funny. I'm talking about hang it up in a smokehouse. Okay, they would smoke it and salt it and it would keep it from rotting. Is that right? And I want to tell you something. Go out in the world and preserve and keep this world from rotting until it's time for Jesus to come. Do that. Be salt. Tomorrow's 9-11. Tomorrow's 
prior to 9-11, I got a phone call sitting at my desk one day, and they said, do you have a, do you have a Bible on your desk? I go, I thought they wanted me to look something up. I wasn't trying, I mean, that's how naive I was. I was like, uh, I may have one in the truck. I don't, I don't know. I was, a, I was working for a, a government agency, and I said, I don't, don't see one. I look in my bookshelf. I mean, th- I mean, seriously, I was, because I didn't know why. And they said, well, we just come out of a meeting. And, 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 and we can't have Bibles in the, on your desk. You know, we can't, you know, there's all this stuff. And I'm like, okay. I don't, I don't need a Bible on my desk. I've got 40 at home and I've, you know, I could be in my briefcase if I need one for that day or, you know, because I would, through my career, I've done, I put people in prison in the morning and, and buried people in the afternoon and then had a wedding that night. I mean, it's, it can be complicated when you can marry, bury, incarcerate all together and baptize. We never did get the mold worked in where we could circumcise. But anyway, but what's this? Here's the deal. Literally, um, I said no. And then when I hung up, because I couldn't find it evidently, and I hung up, somebody else called me and said, you got a Bible in I'm like, no, I've just looked. I, I don't. <laughs> So-and-so called me. They said, he could. So they were arguing amongst themselves whether they could or couldn't, and we could have Bibles, whatever. But you know what happened then? Two airplanes ran into a tower while I was getting my air conditioner fixed at our old house. I watched it on TV the second one hit. And I'm like, and before that day was over, they said, Bruce, is there any way, same organization, same people, that you could meet around the pole with us and pray because everyone's devastated. And I look at that and I think, God, I don't want to go through that again. I don't want to go through it, you know. But what's it going to take for our nation to get its eyes off of the stuff that separates us to bring us back together and, and say, you know, we need, some, we need some spiritual help in this nation. But here's the deal. That preserving, you should be that every day and do it through Jesus, not because of your, your, my theology is perfect. Well, I can, I can tell you right now, mine ain't. Because I'm, I'm, it's my theology. It's just like my outfit. It ain't perfect because it's my outfit, okay? It's just like my... Uh, thoughts on anything. They're not perfect because they're mine. Okay? There's only one perfect, right? Amen. All right. So, the other thing, last one. The other day I had some chicken and they forgot to put the salt packet in my little, it was to go and, there was, and I was on a, a standing up on the bed of a truck or she'd be standing up to a bed of a truck eating it. And this was not at home. Okay. Don't try this at home. But anyway, it just, it was okay. It was edible. But man, it needed some salt. And the last thing I want to talk about was salt. God has called you to flavor this earth because it's a dry and tasteless place. But through the Holy Spirit, you can bring variety <laughs> and a banquet of taste to this world. And you said, no, we all are to look the same. No, no, I hope not, because y'all don't want to do what I do. I'm, I'm saying, and I, I probably don't want to do what y'all do. But all y'all have jobs. If you are his child, if you are part of the body of Christ, if you are son or daughter of God, S-O-G, D-O-G. Oh, I didn't like that. D-O-G. I never thought that through. Okay, G-O-G. Girls of God. Okay. <laughs> I like that better. Like Gog and Magog. Anyway, I don't know. Okay. So, but the point being is this, guys. In that, he has your place in the body of Christ. And you say, I don't fit in. Good. No. Good. I don't fit in. Good. There's very few special operations people. Everybody's not special operations. They don't fit in. You know, there's very few people who are on the elite of the elite of the fighting people. They don't fit in. They're nervous around people. 
Because they tried to always trying to figure out how they can kill everybody. You know, but guess what? They, this nation uses them for particular things. And don't, don't start, get your, don't keep your hatchets hid. Okay. But here's the deal, guys. Literally, he's called, selected, preordained, predestined you from the foundation of the earth to be the man or woman God's called you to be. And you look at these beatitudes like me and you go, well, ain't no way I can do that. Guess what? Merry Christmas. You're part of the posse of the breathing, redeemed saints of God. Once we quit breathing, we don't have to worry about it no more. It's like my retirement plan. You know, I've got it figured out. It's a little box about this big. They're going to suck all the water out of me and stick me in that box and I'll be with Jesus. It's my retirement plan forever with him. Okay. So you're blessed guys. As we walk with him, you are blessed. And let's be salty and not some of the some of the things that word means, maybe not, but let's be salt unto this dry, tasteless, rotting world. Father, thank you so much for these people. You are God. And in spite of us, Oh God, you chose, selected, preordained that is from the foundation of the earth. And Lord, as we walk with you, God, give us grace to be that our attitude would be like the be attitudes. This should be our attitude as we go through these, Lord. I'm going to go through them again with myself, Lord, later. Lord, make me into the man you've called me to be. And just pray this with me, guys. If you're a believer this morning, first, let's pray this together. Lord, just let me be the man you've called me to be. Let me be the woman you've called me to be. Whatever that looks like, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Shape me, make me. And of course, Lord, as always, cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And if you don't know Jesus this morning, you stumble upon this online or wherever you're at in this thing, I want to tell you something. Jesus loves you. He loves you. I have grandchildren, both of blood and of covenant. I have children, both of blood and of covenant. I have brothers, both of blood and covenant. I have sisters, all of covenant. But I'm going to tell you something. There's not one of them that's the same. There's not one of them that is perfect. There's not one of them that sometimes they'll do something. I go, what? Okay, but here's the deal. I love them. And if me, as a fallen, broken father, as the worst daddy in the world, as I look at that and I think about the perfect heavenly father, I just want to tell you, you don't, don't come before him this morning with your head down and, and saying, Lord, Lord, listen, remember the prodigal son. He showed up and he said, Get this boy a new outfit. Put the covenant credit card on his finger. <laughs> Give him some shoes so he can walk this path. And then they had a party. And if you receive him this morning, in heaven this morning, they're going to be showing out. They rejoice as your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Just surrender to Christ this morning. Say, Jesus, I need a Savior. I'm broken. I'm sad. I'm lonely. I need a Savior. Forgive me for my sins, Lord. You paid the price on the cross for me. And I need you, Lord. And it's like being scooped up out of the angry sea. It's getting saved. And if you make that choice this morning, we'll be setting up a time of baptism. If you can get here, we'll baptize you. For those who believe and, and are baptized will be saved. And I don't mean this and the, cross, the thief on the cross. If you're in the hospital this morning, you can't get baptized. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus paid the price, but that's just a sign for all those around us. And I'm going to tell you, he saves. Jesus saves. So thank you so much for watching this morning online. Thank you for being here with us. 
Thank you so much, Lord, for these people. Bless them, keep them, let your light shine on them. And Lord, give us peace, safety, and everything we need in the cross. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I don't know how long.